You could put lard in our green beans. Wonderful. Yeah, our grandmother that did it that way. Things, you know. So you're using coconut I, oil here. Uh -huh. And I put egg whites. I, I beat some egg whites it, and folded them into it. You can't even, you can't see it. It just makes them a little crunchy. Gorgeous so you oh, have whole wheat flour and, and bread crumbs. And from a local bakery, and they make their bread with no sugar, and it's made and, with it's and, made with know, honey, and it's fresh uh, wheat and they grind that. their own wheat, so it's not processed wheat um, like you would get at a grocery store. So um, it's pretty healthy bread, and so I just grind, put it in the blender, and grind it up, and put that in there, and it'll make some crunchy bits in the okra. And we always use pink Himalayan salt. We never use processed yeah. salt, Morton salt. We always use pink, pink Himalayan salt. Hmm? Yeah, show me the cake. Okay, so I had a birthday and I didn't That's go right. get my favorite caramel cake with sugar. <laughs> we made a chocolate cake with no sugar and no flour. And I'm just kind of touching up the frosting here with more butter. And we use real butter. We use coconut flour. That thing has 10 eggs. Coconut flour, some maple syrup. The frosting has a really good dark chocolate from Germany. Cocoa nibs from Peru or somewhere. And, um, and then the honey. We use honey in that frosting with butter. And their butter comes from straight from the cows. Raw and pasteurized. Very yellow. And um, and so vanilla, honey. Anyway, it's on John's website, John Rankin's way. Delicious. You don't miss anything when you go healthy. You can find a way to make everything that you're used to having with lots of sugar and inflammatory stuff. You can find a way to make it all in the John Rankin's way. That's what he's about. Cool. You ready for the change? Thinking one, you need actually in moderation. Yeah. And this is in charge of all the minerals. Okay. You want to put that in there? Well, this is for the I'm doing it on the moon. Uh, it's hard. Hey, girls. Okay. Are you now on the Are you on the Facebook? That was the whole deal. You're on your own line. So, well. I love you so much, dear. You're the greatest thing. Yeah, right. The best thing of health is the moon. Kitchen should get a little crowded sometimes. Oh, that's right. That's right. We have so much fun. So what we're going to do? We're going to cook. Uh, we're going to cook some grass-fed chicken, and grass-fed chicken is a lot smaller than what I call feedlot chicken because grass-fed chicken eats grass. A chicken evolved it to be a seed eater, and uh, and they eat grass, eat bugs, and worms, and, and a lot of vegetables, things like that. Whereas a chicken that's uh, from a feedlot eats genetically modified corn and, and, and soybean grains, and which is pure sugar which is a very starchy foods for you to eat. So we're gonna cook this chicken, we're gonna cook it in lard, lard that we render. And this is lard is from, a, from a, a, a natural pig that eats acorns and grass and flies and bugs and flowers and things like that. But uh, it's very healthy. And we're gonna put in a pan here, a little bit of lard. It's a non-hydrogenated oil. Has one fourth the saturated fat that butter has, loaded with oleic acid, the, the same uh, enzyme that's in olive oil. It's so healthy, and it's uh, again, it's probably the second highest source of vitamin D on the face of the earth. So don't worry about eating lard. Lard will not make you have heart disease. It will not clog arteries, and it uh, absolutely will not make you fat. And I eat lard every day. I'm down to 11 and a half percent body fat from 18 and a half percent body fat which wasn't bad for a guy my age, but uh, still dropped 6% body fat eating what the American Medical Association would like for us to believe will kill you. So we're gonna grab this chicken over here. And it's gonna grip, but we'll take care of all that. We're gonna just swing it over here. We've got a great seasoning on here of some uh, natural pepper stuff. And uh, I'm a little bit fanatical about the heat that I cook at also. That's very important when you cook food so you don't, uh, you don't make your foods inflammatory. You know, I always hate to see something this natural. 
takes it takes months and a year or two to, to raise or grow, uh, and then somebody can just mess it up in about 45 seconds by overcooking it. So so I always be very careful about the heat. That heat got turned off there, but we'll get it going here, and we're going to turn that heat down. Keep our hands clean. Keep the stove top clean. I like to clean as I cook, but after I cook, I don't like to clean. I like to sit down and relax. So I just it's best that I clean as I go. And so um, I like to cook my meats a little bit slower. When you uh, I can cook this chicken in uh, I can cook it in five minutes or I can cook it in 15 minutes. I like to cook it in about 15 minutes. Just slow it down, slow everything down. Makes the flavors better. When you eat the flavors, you'll, you'll taste the flavors. The chicken will be a lot more tender, and it and it won't be inflammatory. You can you can oxidize this meat if you if you burn it or if you turn it up at too high of a temperature. And again, this oil has a 375 degree smoke point, so you're not you're probably not going to uh, you're not going to hydrogenate the oil, but still I like to cook it a little bit slow. And it's about a 10 or 15 minute process. So tell me about what it means to oxidize. Ox Oxidize thank you. something. Well, and why that's bad? Well, oxidation is, is, is basically the main cause. Uh, you know, there's a lot of arguments about this in the science world, but um, there's the, the, the Alzheimer's is, is a big thing in American diet right now. Uh, uh, men's erectile dysfunction and, uh, and, and, and sore hands and sore feet amongst older people. And, and, and all four places in the body where those things are happening just happens to be where you have the tiniest blood vessels in your body. And so when you oxidize a food and it becomes inflammatory and your liver processes an inflammatory product, it causes, it causes inflammation in your arteries. And what it does, it, you, have, you have inside your artery, you have big fluffy uh, particles. That's your HDL cholesterol. And you want your HDL cholesterol to be high. In a man, it needs to be north of 40, the higher the better. In a female, it needs to be north of 50, the higher the better. And so what happens when you oxidize a food, you cause inflammation in your arteries, and you make those particles go from big and fluffy to tiny and dense. When they're big and fluffy with high HDL, they bounce through your artery, and they grab the bad LDL particles that are already in, embedded. They take them back to the liver and excrete as bile out of your body. When those particles become small and dense from oxidized food, inflammatory foods, they stick in your arteries just as you rub your hand across a table with metal shavings and they stick in your hand. And those particles are the beginning of a blood clot. They, they're plaque and the plaque gets bigger and bigger and bigger until you eventually have a blood clot in, in your arteries. And so that's sizzling a little bit. I'll turn it down a little bit. Um, so what happens um, in your brain and all parts of your body those little tiny particles are building up and, and, and they, 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 they oxidize, they cause inflammation, they cause low HDL cholesterol, which in America we have not only a vitamin D epidemic because people aren't eating the, the foods that have vitamin D naturally, but we have an HDL problem. Every other person you talk to has low HDL, which is one of the main causes of heart disease and, and, and oxidation, and in my opinion, Alzheimer's. Uh, Alzheimer's and, and, and these diseases that we're having, erectile dysfunction, all this arthritis, is American-made disease. We don't have it. Uh, it's not. It's not happening in countries such as Asia and India and Okinawa and, and a lot of the countries where the older folks are eating the original diet. Now, as I say that, in those same countries, in the major cities, where the, the, the middle age and the younger population are starting to eat the fast food that's showing up in those countries with inflammatory foods, guess what? They have disease. They have Alzheimer's. They're starting just starting up. They have uh, the erectile dysfunction. They have arthritis and things like that. And so, you 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 want all you want to you want anti-inflammatory foods with high polyphenol antioxidant counts. And when people say, "Well, John, what are the what's an antioxidant food?" Well, any natural food. And, and, and when I say, I like to tell people to eat like it's the year 1700. So any natural food that you eat such as this okra that's cooking right here, okay? That's an, that's an, that's an antioxidant. That, these are full of polyphenols. When this, when this beautiful green thing grows on Earth, polyphenols, it's an enzyme, and, and that enzyme, the polyphenol, is to protect this plant from disease and, and bugs and things like that. And when a human eats this plant, those polyphenols transfer into your body. 
and the polyphenols will kill free radicals. Free radicals are, are, are from uh, things like fast foods, oxidized inflammatory foods. When a free radical starts up in your body from the inflammation that we just talked about, a human body has two to three hundred trillion cells, depending on which science you read. And, and so those cells become inflamed, and those cells look like little mucus balls. or little tiny, the human eye can't see them, and they have mucus around them. That mucus rots, just, just like an apple would rot. If you, if you shaved an apple and set it out, it rots. When that cell rots, that's the beginning of cancer. That's a mutated gene. When you eat a polyphenol, an antioxidant that we were talking about, those antioxidants go in and they kill the, 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 the free radicals, okay? So it's a, it's a battle in the human body daily, but it's not something that people have to be as conscious about, okay, I need to eat some polyphenols at 8 o'clock, and I need to eat some at 10 o'clock, and I need to eat some, you know, at 2 o'clock. You don't, don't worry about that, even though polyphenols and antioxidants are only good for two or three hours in your body. So I kind of contradicted what I said there a little bit, but uh, the, the, the free radicals come back and they try to attack your body. Now free radicals kill skin cells, they, they make your skin grow old, they kill your organ cells, your eye cells, your, your heart cells, your lung cells. And so as we grow older, the, the healthy people that are, uh, let me check this chicken, the healthy folks that are 90 to 100 years old, They've kept those free radicals out of their body by eating antioxidant foods all their life. They didn't smoke cigarettes, they didn't drink alcohol, they didn't eat fast food. And again, like I said, when you go to the countries over in uh, Asia and India uh, and, and talk to the old people, I've, I've, I've spoken with uh, hundreds and hundreds of people from third world countries about their disease and about their health. And most of these people tell me um, in those countries, they said, well, John, my father, my mother are or lived to be 99 years old. And I asked them, well, did they ever have sickness? And they said, no, they never went to a doctor in their life. Now, you go over to India today and you go to Nepal, some of the bigger cities where the fast food restaurants are moving in as we speak, middle-aged folks are becoming diseased. And, and, and uh, there are some countries in the world, um, um, in the Mediterranean part of the world, in, in Europe, that you would be hard pressed to find a hospital. In America, we have a we have a, uh, a dialysis clinic on almost every block in America now, and and it's a uh, it's basically the foods. It's not a phenomenon why we have Alzheimer's. It's not a jail or some super gene that's happening in the brain. It's not a phenomenon why we have diabetes. Uh, uh, type two diabetes is 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 the so the so cause of that is is white processed sugar. And uh, type 2 diabetes is one of the easiest, thing, easiest things uh, um, to reverse. And uh, so we're going to let this chicken here. And I like to let this chicken just get a little bit brown. See, I've got it, I've got it going slow. It's not sizzling out of the pan. And I keep it going slow. And I like to see the, uh, the cooked part of the meat. When it comes up the side and just gets right up right about the top there, then, then we'll flip it. Now, this chicken won't be... Uh, it won't be burnt on both sides like some of your restaurant chicken. It won't have the little cross marks where it came off of a flaming, sizzling grill. And you know, you really don't want your food to be sizzling in a, in a flaming fire. It's not good for your food. So we're almost there. We're going to flip it over and put some more of this special seasoning on here. We like to use a lot of hot seasoning around our house or spicy seasoning, and uh, which is very good for blood flow. It's good for prostate. It's good for lung cancers and, and breast cancers and things like that. Uh, a lot of the latest studies are showing where capsaicin from hot pepper, this stuff right here, is uh, preventing and curing uh, most cancers. And it's due to this anti-inflammatory effect in the body. It's due to the circulation effect that it gives you in your body and the, the endorphin effect. And, uh, and again, I spoke about this. Uh, hot pepper has an anti-platelet sticking action that uh, if you keep it in your bloodstream every day, you probably won't have a blood clot or a stroke. And again, in those, uh, some of those countries in the high mountains of back villages of uh, India and, uh, and some of those villages over there, they don't have blood clots and they don't have strokes. So we're just about ready to turn this chicken. We'll cook it a little bit more here. I like to rotate my pan around. That may seem a little silly, but I, I, like, I never leave my stove when I cook. I don't go sit down and watch TV. 
Uh, I'm, I'm kind of a food addict. I like my food perfect. And so I'll sit here and play with it. And uh, there's a famous guy right down here in Tennessee. He owns a ham business, and his hams are famous worldwide. His name is Alan. And Alan told me a long time ago, he said his grandmother told him that you have to play with your food when you cook it. And I think Alan was right about that. You play with it, and, and I think my grandmother used to say that. You play with your food, you keep it going, you rotate the pan to get the heat even on both sides. And, and um, But I just like my food to taste special, and I like the people that eat at my house to enjoy my food also. And so we're almost ready to turn this chicken. Yeah, I think we're ready. We'll turn it. I may be cooking it almost too long. That looks good right there. As soon as I turn it, I'm going to turn it down to low. Because chicken cooks, you don't need much heat on chicken. Oh, that looks great. These are some grass-fed uh, chicken breasts that were raised actually down here in the Sequatchie Valley, down toward Chattanooga, Tennessee, near uh, near Saudi Daisy and Dunlap, Tennessee. And we've turned this down low, and uh, they've turned it too low. I'll turn it up just a little bit. Sprinkle some more of this seasoning on here. So this chicken is a very healthy chicken, even with all the lard on it. It's a, it's a. Uh, these are very healthy oils, very healthy seasonings, and, and everything in this pan right here is very anti-inflammatory. And there, there are a lot of polyphenols in here, in the oil and the, and the seasoning that will, that will stop disease, prevent disease in your body. And uh, that one there prevent a lot of disease. Got a lot on that, so it's almost finished. You have the recipe for that rub on your website? We do have the recipe, and it's on the website, uh, johnrankinsway.com, and it's, it's, under, um, it's under a Mexican recipe on there and I think it's the only Mexican recipe we have on there right now so it's probably about the third or fourth recipe down uh, and it is on there and we can put it back on yeah what do you got going over in this pan uh, this is some fried okra got at the farmers market it's got um, Cut it up and put your, um, toss it with flour, egg whites that have been beat to stiff peaks, and then uh, grind up some bread crumbs and, and toss it with that and fry it in coconut oil. Okay. Crunchy, crunchy additive for a meal. Okay, this chicken is finished here. I just sliced a piece open. We're not going to brown this chicken. Chicken is like a lot of meats, it's going to keep cooking after you take it out. So if you see a little pink in a chicken, don't worry that it's going to cause you uh, salmonella or E. coli or anything like that. If it's a grass-fed local chicken, it will, you'll never have a disease from it. And so, But a meat will keep cooking once it's finished. So when you look at a meat and you think, well, I need another minute, then go ahead and just take it out because it'll keep cooking. So we're going to go ahead and put this on this plate right here. And this is going to be some good stuff. And I like to flip it around in that oil. I call this, uh, oops, I tell people I like to eat a lot of greasy, cheesy recipes. That's what this is. This is very, very healthy. I usually put a little uh, pink Himalayan salt, which is an unrefined salt, on my chicken. Everybody likes it different. I'll put just a dash of it on there. And I'll clean the floor as I go. And we're just about ready for dinner. So we're having okra, chicken, and the salad over here with all of our garden vegetables. And let me just say one more thing about, uh, we've talked a lot about farmer's markets. And, uh, and, and, and I, just, I just wanna say that most of our food, if we don't raise it and we don't grow it, we buy it from local farmer's markets. And there are farmers markets all over America. They're every week, every weekend. These these folks need support from everybody. Uh, uh, they're constantly being hammered down on by, by uh, government officials. And uh, these these people just want to grow healthy food. So support your farmers markets. Go there, 
search out the best products, the most organic uh, products and vegetables and fruits. And I promise you, when you eat them, you'll notice a difference. And you'll notice a difference when you get on the scale. You'll notice a difference next time you go for your annual physical and have a blood test. So, get healthy America and eat up. Thank <laughs> you.